welcome to Paradelphia Radio. I am Rick Pruitt. We are back here in the recently renovated Toxic <laughs> <laughs> Toxic Radio Studios. And I am uh, I am here with uh, with my crew on the way. Uh, well actually <laughs> we, we have we have one who is who is waiting in the wings here. She's uh, chomping oh. at the bit at her at her house down in uh, Salem County. And uh, Dougie Doug is apparently stuck in on in traffic on uh, Route 295. So yeah, do we want, do we want to bring over Jenna B real fast and show her face? Jenna B is is hanging in there, so why don't we bring Jenna in? <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. There's the face. There it is. Oh wait, is she unmuted? Wait, wait, wait. Let me. I got it. There we, we go. We have her muted. I purposely. had to hit. I muted her. <laughs> <laughs> now, she, now she's on an echo. Now she's on. A, let me fix it. <laughs> what have we tested this already? What happened? Listen, I'm pregnant. I can't drink wine. So get it together. And I'm like, there's nothing else. I'm kind of digging this. It sounds like she sounds like she's falling down a well. <laughs> it's the oh ghost of Genevieve. It's the ghost of Genevieve. <laughs> I've got to fix this. Give me a moment. Oh, I see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so it, well, while Mike is working on Jen's audio, I will uh, fill you guys in on what we're doing this week. So, uh, and again, I want to apologize. Last week was kind of a weird situation. I, I promote, promoted the show for like three days ahead of time. And then, um, as is the case, when you have 65 uh, dogs and cats, one of our dogs got sick, and we had to rush her to the vet, and it just threw everything out of, out of whack on Thursday. Of course, on Thursday night. On Thursday. So, um, yeah, Doug is here now. Yeah, I am. Uh, you had thought that I learned my lesson two weeks ago, but they're doing construction right on, like, exit 18 on 295. Yeah. And it gets held up, and I'm running in here. Now I'm out of breath. Oh, my God. <laughs> Take a breather, man. I'm out of shape here, so okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, like I was saying, we, last week was supposed to be uh, the, the show that we're going to do tonight, but eh, you guys can wait a week. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so it, it is an interesting show, though, because we um, I, I looked into this book a few weeks ago called The Secret Life of Plants. Um, it was one of those things where um, it was just kind of one of those suggestions you get on like Amazon and whatnot, where they say, "Hey, you might be interested in this book," and you get like fifty of them, right? Yeah. And like forty nine of them I could give a shit about, but this one I figured, ah, let me let me look at it. It seems kind of interesting. And when I started reading this, I, I got caught up in this book because it was basically it it, it blows your mind. It'll it will literally change the way you look at the entire world around you. Um. Without getting into it right this very second, we'll, we'll get into a lot of the different um, aspects of what's in the book. But basically, the, the gist of this book is that we are surrounded by plant life that is actually not, not just alive. I know you, everyone knows that plants are alive, but sentient, thinking, mm -hmm. reasoning. They're going to take over the plant. And to a certain extent, they, they uh, and, and this is, it sounds crazy, but there's uh, studies that have been done in this book that prove that they literally can read intentions. And, and, and it's kind of crazy you think about that because you know how what, what they think about, look, ma making last-minute adjustments because I'm late here. So, But uh, anyway, but, like, it, it's crazy because, like, you hear things, too, where they say if you, you know, people will sing to plants and yeah. people will do things like that and it, like, helps them grow and, and things like that, that was the too, beginning so. of, this, of this whole, this whole um, the book. Basically, right. um, it's a book called, it's called, it's called The Secret Life of Plants um, by a guy named Peter Thompson, or two guys named Peter Thompson, Tompkins and Christopher Bird. Um, and basically the situation uh, is that they, uh, they talked, at the beginning, it's, it's a long book, there's a lot that goes into it, but the beginning of this book um, is focused on a guy named Cleve Baxter. Mm -hmm. All right, who lived from 1924 to, uh, to 2013. Um, so 90 years, yeah, roughly something old. like that, right? Um, but back in his heyday, uh, back in the, the 1960s, he was 39, 40 ish <laughs> year old, um, and he was working at or as a uh, interrogation specialist. Okay, so he basically was a an expert on lie detectors. Um, and to the point where he actually founded his own school called the Baxter School of Lie Detection. Mm. So this was his bread and butter. This was his, his life's work was to, to work on lie detection machines to assist the police um, and, and authorities with doing this type of work. Right. Um, but he was also uh, curious. He was, he was a scientific type. And as you do when you are that kind of person, he, 
he kind of just you know went rogue and kind of just tried to do his own little right. side experiments from time to time involving the the equipment that he had. Right. And one of the um, one of the earlier um, experiments that he read about, and you mentioned talking to your plants and, right. and whatnot. Right. So what he read about earlier was this um, study done years before by an Indian. Uh, scientist by the name of uh, Jagadash Chandra Bose. Mm. And he was the one who found that by playing music to your plants, it causes the plants to grow. Wow. So he, he actually, through trial and error, scientifically proved that playing music to your plants causes a significant difference in, in their growth. So it's like not only does, does music do something psychologically to a person, right. but obviously to, in a sense, a plant. Right. You know, wow. So with that as his basis, and he, you know his his kind of interest was piqued once that happened. He had he didn't have music per se, but he had this lie detection mm-hmm. equipment. So one day he figured, kind of on a whim, based on this you know the reading he had done, um, he was going to hook up a uh, the electrodes from a lie detection machine to his plant. It was a uh, dracania plant mm-hmm. um, that he had in his office. Okay. Just to see what would happen. Yeah. Just, just kind of like you know, as you do when you're when you're the the, the inquisitive type. That, that sounds like something you think of sitting on a toilet. Like, wait a minute, yeah. let me try. That. <laughs> what if I tried to do a let lie detection on my this. plant? this. Right, right. <laughs> so what he found um, was very interesting. He he basically <laughs> what he did to start with, <laughs> what he did to start. <laughs> Mike, Mike's, if you, Mike's dancing plant. Yeah. Anyone's listening to this, Mike is putting dancing plants on our video. <laughs> um. What he wanted to do was to see, first off, if the plant reacted when you poured water on the plant. So he wanted to see if that had any, any effect, um, changed the, 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 uh, the, the reading on his equipment. Mm. And it actually did. Mm. Um, so that was kind of interesting to start off with. He wasn't, I, I don't think he was expecting any kind of response. Right. But he got a response where the plant actually had a, 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 an electronic um, that's what it's like an impulse, yeah. Like, yeah, like, like uh, an electronic impulse right. based on the, the water. Because they feed, in general, like, like lie detectors right. depend on nerves and all that, too, you know? So, so he tried this on a few different plants. Uh, there was a dragon plant that was uh, out in his yard. He tried the same thing on, and he found that regardless of the type of plant, it all they all reacted the same way. Wow, so it didn't matter right. anything. Right. They had a spike whenever he would um, actively pour water on the plant. Hmm. Like feeding a thirsty animal or something, you know. It's right. <laughs> so, so, so afterwards, he he kind of got went a little deeper with this, and he said, "Okay, what if I start to do something to actually physically affect the plant?" Right. In other words, he was going to come at it and like clip off a, a, clip a, a, a leaf, a leaf or, or something. Right. Right. So, what he found was that um I'm sorry the first thing he was going to do was burn it he was going he was going to burn oh, the plant let's go to the uh, most intense and yeah. just light it on fire so the yeah. first thing he was going to do was was to burn <laughs> the plant but what he wanted to do was to see if it, it was an effect if he just came at it with the fire mm-hmm. so he was not actually first off intending to burn the plant he just, was just going to hold the fire nearby to see if it had any kind of an like, effect right kind of like no it, stop <laughs> it, it did not have an effect oh really it okay did, it didn't register at all which makes sense okay yeah but then he decided, okay, now I'm going to actually go through with this and burn this plant. And as he approached the plant this time, then there was an effect. Maybe then there was a registration. Right. It's almost as if with us, like we're, we're let's say anything with this quote unquote brain or whatever the thing. It's almost like your 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 sense to know what fire can do if you're not used to it. That's what kind of gives you that scare knowing what it's coming, but until it hits you and you see that it's hurting you, I, I, you know, right. kind of get what I'm saying. Like with a plant, when you start to feel that heat, thinking, oh, wait, this isn't good. You don't have that pre... But it wasn't even when he when he felt the heat. Oh, he, he, hadn't was, even, he hadn't even he set had, it on fire uh, yet. Okay, so it was when... Okay. I'll, so I'll basically the idea was that he originally, the first time he did it, he was not intending to actually to do it. But it burned the plant. But it thought his intentions. Right. The se- oh, the, okay. When it didn't register the first time, the second time he said, "Okay, now I want to see what happens wow. when I actually burn it." And before he actually got a chance to touch fire to the plant, that's when it it registered a response when he just intended to right. do it. Like it read its mind. Okay, right. I'm with you. I thought, okay, I'm with you now. So wow, it's like reading his mind as to what he wanted. Okay, right. That's intense. Wow. And so afterward, for a while afterward. He found that the plant, because he kept the plant hooked up to this machine. Right. And he found that the plant 
afterward for a while, when he would leave the room, mm-hmm. it would ramp down. It's 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 excitement. It calmed down, right, right. When he would enter the room, it would ramp back up again. Wow. As if the plant was recognizing that this is the person who was coming at me with fire. So it got, like, scared, so right. to speak. Wow, that is crazy. That, like... Like you said, it gives you a whole not just something it's, like that. It gives you his whole sense of plants, like it's and, and, mind reading, you know. And these, and, and these tests aren't just one person. He like, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, it, it book goes into it a little bit later. But he right. had his colleagues. Uh, he published in in journals. Like he had people replicate this all, all over the world. Wow! And they all got the same, same response. Response that is like, I mean. Like you said, that's you got to think plants out of everything. They're the longest living thing. They got to figure it out. We just take them for granted. Yeah. I say we go outside right now, go to some trees, and start bullying them. <laughs> well, I was going to say, oh, I was thought you were going to say, go start, start bullying some trees. I thought Mike was going to say, let's just start going setting fires or something like that. Let's trees. Yeah. fire. Let's go start a forest fire well, here. Why in Jersey, not? Let's you know? see if they cry. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so, so. So, what do you think, Jen? You, you're, you've been quiet the whole time here. Are, are you still on mute? No, she froze. She was actually just moving a second ago, and she looks like right as you asked her what she thought about it, she <laughs> it's froze. Like she's thinking. It, it really looks did. Like, it looks like she's thinking of the she answer. She froze as she's soon like, as you asked. That's what? that's <laughs> that's that's weird. That she was already ripe, waiting for you to ask her something. Maybe, maybe the plants. The got plants. Her. I was just getting ready yeah. to say, say, yeah, the plants. The they, plants they, they thought her. of what she was going to say. Right. <laughs> So anyway, uh, he had 25 different types of plants uh, with colla- that, that the collaborators he had used. So it wasn't just the one type. They, right. used, they used, it was a bunch of people, used a bunch of different type of plants, and all came up with the same result. Um, so now th- they kind of started to think about the logic behind this. Okay, because yeah. people and, and animals have um, sensory input. They have eyes, ears, nose, taste. Mm-hmm. Plants don't have any of this. So um, because they... They don't have those things. He got the idea that these plants have to have some type of communication technique that is above and beyond the five senses. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. So so that was what his result was of this, this study was he, you know, aside from the results he got with the test itself. Yeah. The conclusion was that these plants were somehow intuitive to a degree that human beings are not. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Or at least most human beings right. are I not. mean, and it all goes, I know I, I say it all the time because it's like the one main thing, especially with, with my expertise with, with, you know, communicating and experimenting and things like that with, with the ghost world, but it all falls down to what I think is energy. It's all energy. No matter right. how you look at it, energy can be, it can be done in so many different ways. And again, like you said, it, it kind of, you know, when you really get into deep thinking, it goes into like what we say all the time. You know, like you said with us and animals, you know, we have what the brain. I mean, we work, our senses is all because of what our brain detects. So it's kind of like it goes into where plants are a part of, in a sense, this world. So again, it goes into that aspect. Right. Are we pawns of some sort? Right. You know, and like we were just put here on a place that plants already existed in a sense. I mean, I know that goes into deep thinking, so to speak, but it right. just it kind of gives you this whole, yeah, thought process. And everything. I see Jen is back, too. So, yeah, is Jen there? There <laughs> she, she didn't is. freeze again. It's like I'm here now. I don't know what happened. Just all of a sudden you guys weren't talking. And I neither see were you. you. We were joking on your frozenness. So, so we thought you turned into a tree <laughs> <laughs> or a yeah, plant too. or yeah. something. I. I feel like a tree or a plant these days. Just chilling. so, what is your uh, what is your opinion on all this, Jen? What do you think? Um, well, you were saying how like plants don't have. Uh, what did you say? Something about plants don't like have sensory or something. They don't have eyes, anything? ears, nose, right? Right, but what about the plants that you put a fly in the Venus fly traps? Well, well, it goes off a of feeling. They still I don't have an eyes. Ears, I mean, and nose. I feel like they still have a sense of. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I just still feel like... You know, I think that they taste. I they, think that they Delicious. Taste they taste? Uh, yep. They taste good sometimes, I guess, if you put dressing on lettuce. This reminds <laughs> me when I was in... <clears throat> I was in fifth grade. I did this... No, I was in sixth or seventh. I don't remember. I was in some grade, and I did the science fair, and I was completely BS. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I took this, I planted this plant, and, and it that grew was it. a little. So then I started to give it laundry detergent instead of water. 
What? What? Why? I think I remember that actually. Like you didn't you do a bunch of different stuff? Wasn't it not just laundry detergent? I think you yeah. did a couple different things to affect the CIA. So you were grew. basically the Joseph Mengele of plants. You were you were killing <laughs> plants. So they all every time Jenna goes outside, all the trees and everything are right. trying to push away. Good lord! They're like yeah, there, she's going to give us laundry detergent. They're like there she is. Yeah, yeah, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> Hide. Yeah, yeah. I literally, I literally got laundry detergent. I gave it laundry detergent, and it's um, and I ended up getting like honorable mention and got to go to the county science fair because of it. What kind of science fair was this? For, how can we BS. kill the environment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens if we put diesel fuel in the ground? Let's see what happens. <laughs> I BS the whole thing. Mm mm mm. So, further in this study, they decide to um, take it up a notch. And mm -hmm. what he did was he started, he started looking at the results if you took a leaf off of the original plant and hooked up the electrodes just to that leaf okay, that's, yeah. that's been separated from the main plant. Right. And what he found was he got the same results. As in, like, you're tearing a limb off, or, right. or so to speak. Right. So, right. So, this, so, that would be the equivalent of, like, you're, you know, somebody loses an arm. And it grows and, back. Not that it or, grows or, back. So, right, right. But that your arm feels what your body feels or right. somehow sees no i what get you what see, you're you know saying what except in this case i mean you would kind of think of to where the fact it's almost like what is it, like crabs or some seafood like if they lose a limb it's okay it may hurt them we don't know but it, right. like it grows back to a sense but yet if it's dead and it's a dead leaf obviously it kind of loses its feeling so right. it's a different kind of story you know and so they started to to play around with these different experiments right and they started to put these plants together Right. with other plants and see how they reacted when they put, put other plants nearby. Mm -hmm. um, and they found there was minimal reaction with other plants. But once they en um, introduced either human beings or anything living, they mm -hmm. used dogs, cats, any, any kind of animal into the equation. So it wasn't just humans. That's cool, yeah. It was like the plants recognized that the, <clears throat> the animal was more dangerous than the plant because when they saw the animal in the room or right. sensed the animal in the room, then the, the spike went up. Mm. But when it was just the plant there, it went back down again. I wonder if maybe it could detect kind of the way of thinking. I mean, when you think of, like, humans and animals, like, I, I don't know if control is, is the word to say. Well, it's but assuming more, a threat. Right, because to where, you know, we, as human beings, we have more of a knowledge of what we're doing in a sense. I'm not saying animals don't, but... Right. You know, if you kind of get where I'm saying, I don't want, again, I don't want to say control because every species is different, I, you know, but to where a human can, in a sense, better control what it can be done lighting something on fire, so to speak, versus an animal. Right. You, you know, things like uh, like that kind of example. Now, so Now, one thing, one other thing he did find was that at times these plants, when there was inherent danger, when he was, um, when these people were going to, uh, the, the scientists were going to harm the plant in some way. Right. The plant would have all kinds of uh, energetic reaction up to a certain point, and then it would zoop, drop down to nothing. Would it be like instantaneous or like a slow? No, it immediately. It just immediately. Okay, down. gotcha. And what they what they uh, surmised by this was that these plants, in a way, were acting, playing possum. Okay. Um, in other words, the plant doesn't know that it's not projecting itself as a sentient being. Right. Like, let's assume the plant is, is in fact, a sentient being. Okay. If you think about it, uh, you ever see the fainting goats? Yeah. Oh, God. I want one when, so when bad. When you yell or scream at a faint at a goat, yeah. it, like, drops and faints. It fa and it turns like a statue. I want one bad. Absolutely. That is, <laughs> that is what this theory is, that mm. the plant basically is acting as the fainting goat. Right, because a fainting goat, that's its nervous system of, like, oh, crap. Like, it doesn't realize, it, like you said, it doesn't realize it's, like it's it shuts doing down. that. It's just like its nervous system just breathes up. So right. so the plant was doing the same thing with these the, the electrical system. It, wow. it, it, it was ramping up while the danger was approaching. Right. But at some point, it hit, like, a critical mass and just zoop, dropped down to nothing, as right. if it wasn't there, as if it was playing possum, as if somehow doing that would save it from the inherent danger coming. Okay, I see you know what, what you're saying? saying. I'm with you, yep. That's, wow. why, that's why the goats do it. They, yeah, they exactly. drop and they assume that, you know, they're playing dead, basically. Right, they, they figure that's their, their sense of protection. Right. And, and yeah. But he found the plants are doing the same thing. So it's, wow. it, you know, it, it's interesting. To, and all of this, like, we're, we're talking about a plant. So the, the, the thought process that goes into doing this, I mean... It's one thing to even, it's crazy to even think that animals like goats and, and other right. animals like that would do it, but to have a plant do it.
right. is just bizarre. Right. You know, I, I sit there and I wonder, too, with, with looking at, you know, the way that obviously how the environment is and how all the pollution nowadays and things like that. And even when you look over in California, the, these forest fires, you know, I mean, obviously it would... What, what kind of reaction would you get as like a whole, like a mass type situation where there's devastation to these plants and trees or whatever the case is? Right. What if someone were to, in a sense, be able to run a test during a situation Excuse like me. that? I'm sorry, uh, Jenna. Yes, we can hear you. Well, no one was answered. <laughs> well, I heard I, I we could hear ooh, uh, uh, and I saw your hand. I, I'm sorry. I, I mute. I'm sorry. Let me come in here. I apologize for interrupting the conversation. I mute you sometimes because we can hear you doing other things. So sometimes I mute you. It was my fault. I didn't see you trying to talk. Oh. I didn't hear the guys go to you. So I didn't. That that was my bad. I <laughs> muted you. No, well, go ahead. I Jenna. was just fine. Anyway, going back to the fainted goats, that's not true. Fainting goats, when they faint, they actually have a, that's a seizure. Is They're it? They're having a seizure. I didn't know. Yeah. I okay. thought it yeah. was just like a sensory thing that they just froze up their nerve. I didn't know. No, they don't seizure. play. No, they're actually having a seizure. See, Doug, now you don't, don't you feel like an asshole? You're going to give a goat no, a seizure? No, because I always <laughs> said, I've always said, since I've known fainting goats existed, I've always said, like, you want one just so if you're having a bad day, you just run outside and yell and Screaming just watch because they're just so funny. I mean, just go <laughs> on YouTube and search fainting goat and just watch it on that. Like, they're just hilarious. Yeah, but in that case, you're causing them to go into like a mental breakdown, right. but you know. You know, but animal rights groups coming after me. So, <laughs> so for years now, um, we we've heard. Uh, this is an interesting aspect of all this. We've heard the the vegans talking about how they're you know they they want to save animal life and eat eat uh, plant life, right? But because it's not saving animal life. Thinking about this, <laughs> so so now this is an interesting aspect of this because if this is true and it and it seems to be based on all these studies, you're not. You're not avoiding harming a sentient being by right. eating plant life. Right. But an interesting aspect of, of, of the study here, um, and it, it almost sounds a little too convenient to me, mm -hmm. but supposedly this was the result. This was the, the data that was collected. But when plants have that um, spike in electrical output, when there's danger inherent in the room or in the area, the other thing that happens, or a another thing that happens with the plants, is that they have or release a, a thin film of toxic chemical. Okay. Most times, it's not it. It, it doesn't matter because it's not um, not enough lethal. to be harmful, right? Not to, enough to, anybody. to like, kill, right? Right. But that's a, a part of the reason why they tell you to wash your vegetables <clears throat> and, and fruits when sure. you. Eat before you eat they them. don't think about the fact they think the first thing people think is oh you're just getting rid of the bacteria and right. stuff like that off of it so they decided to do a little experiment with this um aspect of the the study okay and given the fact that they had this chemical that was released when the anxiety was ramped up and danger was inherent mm -hmm. um what they were realizing was that the danger that they were putting the plants in was all um aggressive and mindless danger, meaning they were coming at it with s fire and scissors and whatever in the name of science, yes, but there was no altruistic reason behind right. it. I say it wasn't a good reason. It was just let's let's burn the shit out of this plant because we want to find out the results. Because we want to see test. what happens. Right. It's like sacrificing a, a rodent to some. So yeah. what they did was they they did also do that on some of the plants, but the other control portion of the experiment was that they had a group of plants where they basically set them aside right. and they used them solely for food. Okay. And they talked to the plants. And this is going to sound crazy. I know I'm, I sound crazy when I'm saying this, but they talked to the plants and explained through the plants what they, what they intended to, to use them for. Interesting. Wow. And what they found was that this <laughs> chemical was not released from those plants. When they were explained that they're going to feed you to help. Right. So it's almost wow. like the plant knows its intention. needs to know the intention of why it is being killed, why it is being eaten, why it is being destroyed. Uh, uh, and if it's a good intention, if it is an altruistic intention, right, then the plant will essentially sacrifice itself to that it, end. It's almost like it knows its intention to the, to, so to speak, to the food chain. You right. Know, you know, I mean, of course, 
And then you get somebody listening to the show that's hardcore, like, oh, my God, now I got to go talk to my grass every time I get ready to go right. cut it. Like, I'm just doing it so you don't look a mess, well, that, you know. But That grass but, smell, but that, that's the chemical I, that's being the released. That's the chemical. And you know what? I forget. That's your grass screaming. There actually just <laughs> something tells me just recently, in fact, that I read somewhere that or someone told me that that grass smell, and I forget where it was, but it wasn't that long ago, that yeah, that smell that you smell mm -hmm. Is the grass giving? It's like giving a warning off right. to all the other grass, like, right. "Hey, watch it! We're being killed." And I forget where, but it wasn't that long ago. And it's so crazy we're having this conversation because it wasn't that long ago that I I heard that. It's more right. like a warning sign, you know, like to yeah. other other places or plants. So one of the other things they wanted to check was now that they had all this information. These plants apparently were 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 thinking. They were sentient. They they could essentially read someone's intention. Right. They could think complex thoughts to the point where they would um, give themselves up, so to speak, right. for a good cause. Mm -hmm. Okay, all these things are, are are data that's been collected. Crazy as that sounds, so they wanted to check about the memory of the plant. They wanted to see if these plants, if this was true, if these plants had some kind of a memory. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they got two <coughs> plants, uh, put them in a room, and they have six people. Six people who were in a separate room. Okay. Those six people drew randomly out of a hat. And one of those people, known only to that person, drew the, you know, the, the card, let's say, or the, the, whatever it was they picked, saying that they were the person who was going to go in and harm one of the plants. Okay, right. So they sent all six people into the room. Mm -hmm. and one by one. One by one. Right. And the one whose job it was to harm the plant took one of the plants and destroyed it. Okay. Cut it up, stomped it, destroyed it. Right. They then marched one by one, marched the people back through the room again, mm -hmm. and had that second plant hooked up to the machines. Okay. Five of those people, that plant did not respond. But that one the other. The one person who harmed that other plant went up. Went right through the roof. You know what? And Jenna, I don't know. You might be able to help me out because I feel like it, it's from when we were younger. I cannot remember what movie it was, but I remember there was a movie, and all I know is one we watched all the time when we were younger, but there was something it had to do with Native Americans, and when you were talking about talking about the, um, you know, speaking to the plant, giving the intention, and it didn't give it off the It was Three Ninjas. That's right. What? Remember the, all right, the third one. There was a Three Ninjas movie. We used to watch it all the time. And in, in what would you say it was the third one? And the third there, one. They were there was on the Indian reservation. They were on an Indian reservation and there was this old woman and she was talking and one of the kids walked up to her and said, Why are you speaking to the plants? And she says, I'm letting them know that the reason I'm cutting off their flowers is to make medicines and things like that. Right. And they were asking, Can they hear you? And she was kinda like saying, It's not that they can hear me. It's that they know what my intention is. Right. And with you now explaining this conversation, it kind of makes sense that with that being Native, it's almost like if Native Americans, you know, they know that, yeah. it just goes to show you more in depth of how they are more in tune with the oh, yeah. with the earth and things like that. And it just popped in my head, and I couldn't remember what movie that was. Yeah. But where it came into my head is that, that she was said, she was explaining right. that, you know, it doesn't matter that they, it's not that they could hear me. It's they know what I'm doing. Right. So, and with you saying that, that's amazing. That just goes to show you. So. so, so they decided to ramp up this test again. Now that they've determined all these things about this plant, uh, it has, you know, it's sentient. It, it can uh, basically read your intentions. Right. Um, it, it, rem it has a memory. It can remember right. different things. So now they wanted to find out if the plant actually would react to something else other than another plant being harmed. Okay. So what they did was they set up an experiment to test empathy within the plant. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And they set up an experiment where they took brine shrimp. Right, you know what brine shrimp is? I know was, what like brine the real shrimp small, is. Those small, shrimp. tiny ones. Yeah. Yep. yeah. They took brine shrimp in another room, okay. not even in the same room as the plant, in another room in the building. Okay. And they put the brine shrimp into boiling water and right. killed them. Gotcha. They had the it's shrimp. They, <laughs> I know. I'm saying that we're talking about plants. You know, they right? had <laughs> the plant hooked up the entire time to uh, 
through the machines. Okay. And they found that once those shrimp went into that water, the electricity in the plant spiked. Wow. As if it understood the death of another creature in another room not even not even within not the, even in the, the same range. thing but then again like you said is it like just read is it the fact it's sensing the death of another creature or is it because it's reading the mind of the person doing it saying that's the intention you get what i mean like you were saying that well it could be either it I could guess. be either you're right like so it's kind of like well which one is it is it the fact that it's just sensing that you know right. this other being is causing Right. Some kind of death to it, or is it sensing? So that's interesting. Wow. So it doesn't matter if it's planned or not. Yeah. Yeah. So Cleve Baxter, this guy who did all started all this ex- this experimentation, he tried to get this work published here in the U.S. in in mm-hmm. the late '60s. Okay. And he was basically laughed out of the room. Of course. Now we're so stubborn as Americans. Right. Well, it, it, you know, it's one of those things where he just he just you know he had his his his, his data, but nobody wanted to hear it right. because it was just such a far out, insane premise. Right. That he, that it wasn't like anything else, so like, the stuff we talk about every day. Exactly, it's, you know, it's the like, ghosts and Bigfoot right. and UFOs it's and like, all that oh, stuff. Oh, get out of here, you know. But you, you know, for for somebody who's who's not a believer, um, who's a skeptic, there's not there'll never be enough proof. Exactly, you, you know, you're just not open minded enough to realize, you know. But everything's again, it's all connected. In this case, it even shows you down as far as the plants or the grass that you step on every single yeah. day. Everything's so. What he wound up eventually doing was actually going to, of all places, the Soviet Union. Wow! And he lectured in the Soviet Union on something called primary perception, mm-hmm. which is uh, which basically means the ability of plants being able to be aware and receptive to stimuli taken against it or other <coughs> creatures in the area. That's right. he called that the term for that. He called primary perception. Okay. Um, and eventually, he moved. Uh, on from the plants, and he started testing other things mm. like uh, yogurt, eggs, human sperm. So actually, things like that, right? Different types of things, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. So you basically had a situation where you have um, um, what, what is it? Uh, there's a, there's a term for this, and I'm I'm missing the term right now, but poly uh, ew, poly ew. The term is the term is ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was gonna, see I, for a second there. I was serious. Polly U. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go pa- around telling people, "Huh, oh, Polly U." I'm wrong. Pa- panpsychism. Panpsychism, okay. which is the theory that that basically uh, the mind is a fundamental feature of the world that exists in the universe. Okay. Wow. So basically, everything is sentient, mm-hmm. and that was his ultimately ultimate takeaway from all this. He he right. tested the plants, but then he tested all these other things, and literally every single thing is sentient right uh if you have a chair made of wood that wood that wood is still sentient still yeah in some manner um so you know it it kind of puts the the world in a whole different perspective because you can't Mm -hmm. pick and choose now right you can't say well this is alive and this isn't because it's all alive because you have to think even man-made things like you just said like with a wooden chair i mean no matter how you look at it Everything that's made around us, even man-made things, it's made, essentially, there's something right. natural that's mixed in with it. it. You know what I mean? Like, even when you look at chemicals and, and things like that, you know, everything's got to be made from something natural. You know, right. things aren't just in popping up in, in the middle of nothing, right. you know? So, whether it's a little bit or a lot, you know, it's all... Yeah, it's I mean, it's crazy to think about it, but it's the truth, you know. Yeah, and and, and it really does. It, it it you know you look around and you're just like, wow, that you you have an effect on literally everything. Yep. And There's it, not it, anything we step on, sit on, move around. Yeah. And it, and it kind of goes to to the idea like people are more powerful than they realize that they are. <laughs> right. Um, and I don't mean necessarily powerful for power's sake, but just influential. Sure. I guess is, is the better word. Influential. Right. Mm-hmm. You you influence your own self and other people around you, but you also influence the world around oh, yeah, you. Absolutely. The animals you, you, you encounter. Like every single thing, your your intention even. It doesn't even have to be your action, it's just your intention. Right, right. Is is influential. And you know what's interesting too is the fact that, you know, we've talked about many times where right off the bat the first thing they think about when 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 they look at, for example, uh living like other other species living on another planet you know right off the bat the first thing people think of as living is up oh, there's a brain they can think and things like that but there could be something that 
that's just what we know of life, quote unquote, to be. <laughs> you know, when you look at something like we're talking about tonight with plants, I mean, obviously, when you think of a plant, there's no brain or anything like that. We had to learn all of this because someone decided to do experimentation. Right. You know, but without that experimentation, you wouldn't have realized that it has these capabilities. So, again, I mean, let's say they find a, a plant on another planet, let's so to speak, you know. Let's say uh, the fact is the first thing they're going to think, oh, there's what? If there's plant life, that means there's water. That means there's life. Well, that plant life right there could be just the even though it does not have a brain. Yeah. And like you says, it's sensory or it's it senses like we do. Right. You know, we are just going off of what we know, but you got to look beyond that. And this is a prime example right here of yeah of, of how to look at that. So it's yeah, it, yeah. It, the the. the the NASA or whoever it is out there now searching, uh, that's always cracked me up. Yeah. They, that they just, they, they narrow that yep. yeah. definition of life to the extent that, you know, if it's not exactly something. Like us. If it isn't something you, that could exist on Earth. Right. You're not looking for it. Exactly. If it's not walking around, doing things, thinking, things like that, but, you know, it's line of thinking again. I never would have thought a plant. I mean, yeah, you, you think of all plants are living things, but. What's the basic thought of a plant? The fact, like, before thinking of this is, oh, yeah, okay, it's a living thing. It grows. It needs sunlight, food, all that, but whatever. It's just there. Right. But it's got these is sensory. Is define what water is? You're cutting out there, Jen. What'd you say? Didn't they find water on Mars? Yeah. Yeah. They found, yeah. Like, doesn't, like, that mean, doesn't that mean that there's life or something no, like that? No, water Water is like, no, they're, what they're saying is the fact that if there is water <coughs> present, then there is, there is potential to be life because life, you have to have water for there to be life. So it's kind of like a, a, a big, big, um, in a sense. Something uh, you have to have. You have to have in order to have life. So that's what, again, like Rick said, it's always been something to crack me up. If there wasn't water, like if they didn't find any source of water, then they would never think of there being life. But again, how do you know that? That's just based off of what we have and based off of us and, and things like that. Like you need water in a sense to live, but well, who's to say that? And, and the other thing you, you, you can think of here, like when you do your ghost hunting yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. we, we, there's a thing called the uh, stone tape theory. Exactly. Where um, places, uh, physical places and buildings and, and, and rocks and materials hold the 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 essence of people that had lived there before and right. can sometimes project that out and that's the idea behind the stone tape theory exactly well this kind of lends itself to that because yeah. if, if if this material these these bricks and these stones and these um timbers and the the plant life and the dirt and everything there is actually physically sentient and alive right then, and has a memory, has a memory, like it's been proven in this test. Absolutely. Then that memory would then le lend itself to that theory. And, you know, it's so crazy because, again, I just thought, and I want to look this up to see if it's th ever thought of. You know, one of the things you always hear that, again, stone tape theory, limestone, you know, brick, things like that, leading that, giving off where that energy gets trapped and it can replay itself, again, like stone tape or cassette tape, right. and you're in the right place at the right time, well... You know, now sitting here thinking about this, and it just goes in my head. Well, how do we know that that doesn't occur with plant life? No one's ever thought of that. Yeah. If plant life has this capability of having memory, and if someone is experienced or experiencing something that is in a residual, if there's sense, a tree there that's been there for two hundred years. Yeah, or whatever. If you're in the middle of the woods, like for example, um, <clears throat> you have a lot of things. Uh, there, there's been cases I've read up on where you get the stone tape theory. Maybe there'd be like an old road in the middle of these woods or something, and people have experienced headlights, and maybe they're just getting the sense of an old highway or something like that, and they're right. just seeing that. Well, there's a lot of trees and plants there. How do you know that right. that, that stone or that, that concrete is doing it? Yeah. What if it is the plant? It's almost like an old projector. Right. Much like that. So this just gives a whole nother aspect on things. Something definitely I like to think about, especially with my my uh Pine Barrens experiment I want to start next year. And so it, yeah. <laughs> you and, know what I mean? It's like and, and you know, you think about um things like poltergeists. Yeah. Right. And and poltergeists have um uh, typically been um associated with typically female adolescents yep. going through puberty, that kind of thing. Their where, energy and aura is really Where their really energy strong. is projecting out and causing the, the physical uh, items in a house to move or, or, or smash around or break or whatever. Right. So if there's that kind of energy that can be put out by people, yep. then what's to say that same energy couldn't manifest itself in different ways from different um, 
life forces. Exactly. Yeah. That that it's just plants, like, animals, trees. Yeah. This uh, totally rocks. opens my mind up to so much more because, again, and I mean, as far as all the research I've done over the years, you never look at plants as being something like that. But if you go off of this research this person's giving, and I, and again, I feel like it's because we take plant life, I mean, grass, things like that, you just take it for granted because as far as you know, everywhere you go, right. even if it's a tree in the middle of a concrete slab, you know what I mean? You right. just don't pay attention to it. So this just opens up. If plants have that capability... You know, who's to say that that's not a reason for, you know, I'm not saying just for haunting, but just going yeah. off of what I research. Right. Who's to say that's not a good reason for it? So, especially if you take something like this, like, again, this is just bringing up all kinds of ideas. You take, like, a, a plant and you put it in an area or a place that's said to be haunted, hooking up different things like this. Well, if activity spikes, could this plant? Maybe, you know what I mean? Not saying that it understands right. what death versus a spirit and living is. Right. Well, but it, it's interesting because because the because, <laughs> of course, once this data and this uh, these scientific tests were put out there, mm -hmm. the very first thing, of course, the very first thing they wanted to use this for was a military application. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So can, what, what can we tell if a bomb's coming? Or right. Not? Well, you that's know? what they're right. doing. Right. What, what they're saying is what they wanted to do was to hook up. Let's say you're you're, you're in a war and you don't want to put soldiers in danger. Right. So why not hook electrodes up to plants in the area and then draw your forces back and see wait who's coming and right. wait to see when those plants spike. Then it's like because okay. when they spike, that usually is going to mean there's danger inherent in the area, which is usually people. Right. Or yeah, but in this case too, they've had that same reaction if like animals. So like if right. you go and do that, you get a swarm of buffalo coming or something like that you're going to think yeah. you got a whole infantry coming when all it is is but, just wildlife right. but, but still. It's, it's not perfected but i'm saying but still the, the idea behind it is to use this right. um these data or this data as a um a way to detect right um human intervention or human and, presence right. yeah like like i said i mean this actually just brings up all kinds of neat things like again uh, you know Again, looking at it with, with, you know, the ghost research I do, like, figuring out is there a way to hook something up and just see if a plant can react if there's a lot of activity. Right. But, see, again, though, it's hard because, again, determining how a, a plant spikes versus if, you know, we are in a room versus if there is some kind right. of spirit. But, uh, again, there's so many things. Like, it's just crazy. It does. It opens up to a whole new world of everything, yeah. not just research or, you, you know, there's so many things, but... Hear that, Jen? No yeah. more, la no more salads. Yeah, they're gonna. You, uh, you, I'm just. I'm going. Not, I can't eat salad when I'm pregnant anyway. Why? Why? You can't have bagged lettuce because it could have listeria. So well, grow well, your own lettuce. I was gonna You're say. You're in Salem County. Just pick some lettuce. Yeah. I was gonna say, what did they all do? What did they do back in the day when they grew plants and ate grass? Did they say we can't do it? No, you could. I mean, we could you get can lost. have a salad. It just can't be bagged. Same thing with lunch meat. You can't have lunch meat because it has too much high risk of listeria. See, you know what? And and this is what I'm gonna do. You know, like like you were talking about. You have like you know, like vegan and stuff where they say yeah. no meat. I'm gonna start something. No eating plants. Just meat only, you know, not because of a diet, because plants are living things. If called, they can do it about meat. Well, the keto diet. Called, called, well, yeah, that too. But yeah, because all I'm going to, and, and the advertiser's going to be is every time someone's taking a bite of any kind of lettuce or anything, you're going to hear, no, no, please, <laughs> put me down. Put me down, you know, and it's just like, yeah, at least when you're eating a cow, you don't hear, mmm, no, mmm, no. All yeah. right, so. <laughs> but yeah. Definitely we're, interesting topic. We're going to start uh, start winding down here, but I wanted to mention a couple things before we uh, wrap up for the evening. Um, on December 3rd, you're going to have, finally, after we had to postpone <coughs> his appearance here a few weeks ago, we're going to have Mario Cerrito, mm -hmm. filmmaker extraordinaire. He's going to be on to talk about his latest film, Human Hibachi. Oh, that, man, that that's... Was, uh, released back... Well, well, I have to ask you, what did you think? Of the movie? Yeah. Oh, it's 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 wild. Uh, it is. I, I watched it, and it's you're wild. right. It is. You definitely have to be ready to watch yeah. it. Let's just. Say. It's it's yeah. one of those movies. He, he he said the whole time it was a cult movie. It was going right. to have a cult following. It's not a mainstream type of movie you could release oh, yeah. in theaters. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's true. Yeah, no doubt about um, it. Yeah, but you know that's uh, back in the day they said that about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. They said that about um uh Night of the Living Dead. Mm -hmm. 
those movies were were cutting edge mm-hmm. in that way back then. And and it's like I said before, it's crazy. Like Mario is like Mario and his wife, like nicest people in the yeah. world. Like definitely will do anything for you and to just watch even his other movies, just to watch something yeah. like this and know that it came from his mind. You're like. You know, what kind of psychopath am I really <laughs> friends with here? You know, but no, seriously, it, it, if you can get into that kind of thing, definitely. And he's uh, definitely he's got good. some good things working going forward. He has his new new project uh, called House in the Pines. It's going to be shot uh, oh, next okay. year. Gotcha, right? Um, I actually got to uh, to read the screenplay for that. Did you? Oh, okay. That <laughs> is that is going to be something special. Awesome. That's that is going to be something that is a mainstream type. Film. Oh, I'm sure. Well, like um, you said, his any day now, his time, like hitting it big. I mean, he's already getting it big, but like he's yeah. definitely well, well on his way. He's to... got. Uh, I, I'm, I'm. I don't know the names of the people he has working on it, but he has some some big name people that were working on um, well known horror franchises like, uh, uh, I think the uh, uh, what's the Freddy, um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, he's got a uh, he's got a music um, coordinator that won. Oscars, nice. Like Good he's deal. He, he's got people that are working on this that are well known and respected in Hollywood. Yeah, definitely. Like um, I said, he's definitely like you know he's already making a big name for it, but he's definitely well on his way. I mean, he's just he's yeah. great. You know, not just saying it as he's a friend of ours, but he's definitely you know yeah, he's, creative and can turn with what little bit that he can get with making a movie can turn it into something. It's not some cheap B-rated thing you yeah. would expect. Like, he can really turn something from yeah. nothing into something. So, so uh, Human Hibachi is out now. Uh, <coughs> he, uh, Human yeah, Hibachi. I heard the photographer for that was a real hoe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was Jen. Yeah. Was I, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm the hoe. <laughs> if you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so that was uh, that's out there now. Um, again, you can go to humanhibachi dot com and you can still rent that online. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does have a deal uh, in place now to do uh, streaming with um, with a company. He he'll, um, I, I didn't prepare for this part of the conversation here, but he has a streaming deal set up. Good deal, yeah. Uh, yeah. What we we've, we've posted on social media. I can't mm-hmm. remember the name of the. It's like sleaze bag, <laughs> you know, something, something like that. Something you would expect. Some kind line. of weird name, especially for, you know, yeah. When when you get they, they banned, do like cult movies. Yeah, when you get banned <laughs> from Amazon, like yeah. he did, you know. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, um, I'm not sure exactly when the date we're going to have him on uh, because I I'm still waiting to get his latest book. But Barry Strom mm-hmm, is going to yeah. be back on very soon. Uh, Barry wrote a book um, about the uh, again channeling uh, the life of Jesus Christ again. Mm-hmm. He went back to uh, back to the well again to the the religious aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually has a podcast out there now yeah, uh, called Channeling History, which is kind of interesting. He The thing he did on our show where he, um, I think he did, what he did, Neil Armstrong, He did Neil, right? yeah, I, I, first name that came into my head, he did like Neil Armstrong or something like that briefly yeah. last time he was on. So, so the premise of this show is is he um, he picks a different historical figure right. every week. Cause, and because he, he's on YouTube with it too. Like yeah. he he's done like, I've seen like Michael Jackson, uh, a lot of people like if yeah. you just search him on on YouTube he's done a lot so, so if you go yeah. to channel uh look for channeling history that's his, that's his show so I told yeah. him I'd uh mention that and we'll have him on again in a few weeks when I uh, get a chance to read through the book and we'll do another interview yeah. with uh, with Barry and it's already Thanksgiving next weekend and after that we'll we have what like three shows and then it's Christmas already and it's just like oh my god yeah so uh so that's a good point so next week is Thanksgiving so I'm not sure I don't think we're going to be doing a show on Thanksgiving so we huh. will uh do the next show the week after, which I believe is the show with uh, with, with Mario. With Mario, the third. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it'll be the third, and then we'll roll towards uh, towards Christmas, and we'll do some Christmassy kind of things. Yeah. Some holiday ish kind of things. I'll wear a Santa hat and new shirt. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then two weeks after that, baby Noah will be. Yeah. Here. Well, we, I, and I don't want to. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here, Jim. But we, you and I, talked <laughs> about a little project we were going to do with regard to your uh, pending uh, newborn. I hope it's not yeah. be live streaming in the, so, the delivery room because no. I just don't want to be part of that. I was on Toxic Radio's <laughs> yeah. live stream pay per view. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, people now, would Mike's be, gonna be my coach. My birthday. I was gonna coach. say people would be paying Mike not to pay, to do that and be like, "Here, do not." <laughs> I'll bite off the umbilical cord. Oh, 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 oh. yes. Yeah. Mm. And there we yes. went. Be like coneheads. Do you want to cut the cord? He's like, mm-hmm. He there, there's, the there, there's always a part in every show where I know enough's enough, and yeah, that yeah. was it right there. <laughs> Why is Mike always involved in something that, like that? That where was you just it. Got to draw the line. You always got to cross that line, Mike. 
Jeez. But anyway, Jim, we will uh, we'll discuss that, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll get that set up for uh, sometime in December too, before the yeah. birth. All right, before so the <laughs> before the birth, so uh, interesting night. Yeah, um, definitely something to think about. You know, when you go out there and you uh, stroll through the world, just keep in mind what Thanks, you say man. and what you do and what you think around the plants because. They are listening. Hey, it kind of reminds you of the movie War of the Worlds and things like that, like with Tom Cruise and stuff, you know. Yeah. it's. I feel like if there's any kind of destruction to happen, it's going to be plant life just saying, you know what, forget you humans, we're going to release some toxin and kill you all off, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. So, which, one more thing before we sign off, I mentioned to Rick, I think it was like two weeks ago, I found a War of the Worlds movie called... Um, Oh, uh, my God. Why am I forgetting it? Uh, something New Jersey. Uh, uh, remember that text you, that yeah. War of the Worlds movie? I just found it, and it's based off of a town not far from... Gro- uh, Grover's Mills? Yeah, from Grover's Mill where it happened, and it takes place back when they broadcast it, when, uh, when he broadcasted the War of the Worlds originally, and this town was like two hours away from Grover's Mill, and they heard the broadcast, and they actually... It's based on a true story, a small town. They were preparing for the Martians to come in there. And they said everybody, they hid the children in a a schoolhouse and the whole town made a line saying, all right, they're going to be here by 4 a.m. We're going to fight till the end. You know, only to find out when 4 a.m. came, nothing happened. But, like, it was... Did uh, they shoot up a water tower or something? Yeah, something like that. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I forget what the (laughs) heck... They anyway, saw the water tower and, you yeah, know. They saw it was, yeah. They shot it up and everything. Shot up the water and tower. come to find out. Here it is. Uh, it's called Brave yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, it's called Brave New Jersey. And uh, I think it's like it's on Hulu. And um, and I don't think it's on Netflix, but like Hulu, I found it and I watched it. And it's not that old of a movie, but it's, it's funny and interesting. Cool. And it's, again, based on a true story of a town thinking, yeah. wow, they heard it, thinking they were on their way and they were all fight yeah. to the death. So. All right, so that's gonna uh, that's gonna wrap us up for the evening. Uh, again, we are on social media. Don't forget that. Go to Facebook and find us on Facebook at Paradelphia on uh, on Twitter. Oh, the socials. The socials. Um, so yeah. So we'll uh, and of course follow uh, Toxic Radio. You get, what, what are you, Mike? You're at Toxic Radio. Is that how it goes? At uh, am I still on? You're on at Toxic Radio Live. And if you want to follow me for more fun antics like what I did at the end of the show <laughs> at Toxic Spunk. <laughs> Like what you did at the end of the show? What are you getting nude or something? It's I a mean, you can't see me. Show. I'm not on the camera. <laughs> he's he, he's behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't yeah. know if he's I'm wearing pants or not. He's like well. the wizard mm. <laughs> or the wizard, something like that. <laughs> it's the par- yeah. Every show that's on Toxic, he does a post show in his underwear. <laughs> After you all leave, it's mic time. Oh boy, the mic show. The mic show. Right. Well, then Mike we got on, five minutes to get yeah. the hell out. Mic on mic. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for the evening. So for uh, for Genevieve, for uh, for Dougie Doug. Yep. Thank you for uh, for uh, Justin, who's uh, doing our audio this time, and uh, He's Mr. The Mike. He's the quiet one no one knows about. Mr. Mike behind the scenes. I am Rick. We are Paradelphia, and we are out of here. Yeah.